Over the last couple of episodes, we have looked specifically at the links panel and the pages panel and how fundamental they are to producing work in InDesign. These are some of the most important panels when working in InDesign. However, there are some other panels worth mentioning that you will need to know about. Soon, we are going to get hands-on with InDesign, but before that, there are just a few other panels you should be aware of to get started using InDesign. So let's jump into InDesign and take a look. So here we are where we left off with the previous video, and right now I'm working with the current workspace I set up earlier, with all my panels in place like so. If you don't have the same workspace, don't worry, as I'll be taking you through it shortly and showing you how you can access all the panels I'll be mentioning in this video. So to begin, let's open this document to explore the panels. This document can be found in the downloadable folder that comes with this course. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we will be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder in the description. With the download folder open, click into folder three, document samples, click into folder two, double-sided, click into the flyer folder and click to open the blow dry crew flyer InDesign document. Now for this document, I'm using the font made Tommy soft. If you have not already downloaded all the fonts for this course, this is a free font that you can acquire online. To get this font, I would recommend you check out the course fonts page on the course PDF document. This is a list of all the fonts that are used in this course and where to get them. Simply click the made Tommy soft link and this will take you straight to where you can download it. Simply close this document, install the font, open it back up again and you should be able to follow along just fine. So as well as the links and pages panel, which we've already looked at, there are lots of other crucial panels we should be aware of. And one of those is the control panel. The control panel is located at the top of the screen and will display various properties and options of a particular tool you have selected at any given time. For example, if we simply click on a frame in the canvas area with a selection tool up in the control panel, we will see a range of information and options from the size of the frame to rotation, object wrap, frame fitting, stroke size to alignment options to name a few. If we click into a frame with some text, double click and select some text, up in the control panel, we will see options to change text formatting criteria, where we can edit a whole range of typography options. And if we look closely, with text selected, you will see over on the far left two icons. Right now we have the top one selected, which represents the character options. Below this is an icon that represents paragraph options. If we click this, we will reveal more options specific to paragraph options we can edit. Now the control panel is also crucial for managing objects in your work area. If you have multiple objects selected in your work area, the control panel is good to access align tools to easily manage alignment inside frames and in your composition. So there is an extensive range of options we can change up in the control panel with various objects selected in the work area. Especially when working with frames and type, it's good to have this panel visible. If you cannot see the control panel, you can come up to window and click it there and it should appear. So while we're on the topic of controlling objects, another important panel to be aware of is the properties panel. Now the properties panel helps to simplify and accelerate your workflow, especially when working on designs that involve frequent switching between text, images, and objects. The properties panel complements the existing tools in InDesign by offering a centralized dynamic workspace helping both designers and professionals work more efficiently. If you cannot see your properties panel, come up to window and click on properties. Now, if there is nothing selected in the document, the properties panel will display page related controls, including document setup, margins, adjust layout, rulers and guides, and text to image. Here you can edit document settings, toggle on and off the grids and guides, and also generate a text to image using AI. Now, when an object is selected in the work area, this panel will work similar to the control panel, where it will show you options specific to selected objects. Now, one small detail to pay attention to. With an object selected, any sections in the properties panel that have more options than shown will have these little three dots in the bottom right. If we click these, we can reveal more options, and by clicking again, we'll collapse the options away. I like to keep my properties panel to the left of my main panel. This makes it really easy to pop out on the fly. I also like to drag the bottom left corner down so when it is active, I can see all the options clearly inside. The properties panel dynamically changes based on your current selection, 
whether it's text, an object or an image, showing only the tools and options relevant to that element. This minimizes the need to switch between multiple panels, keeping your workflow focused and efficient. The Properties panel combines the best of both worlds by showing only what's relevant and keeping the interface clean and accessible. If you cannot see your Properties panel, come up to Window and click it there. So another important panel to be aware of is the Swatches panel. A pretty obvious one here, but nonetheless pretty important. When working in InDesign, we will be managing color a lot in the Swatches panel. It's here where we can create new swatches and color groups for our document. I like to keep my swatches panel up in the top row with my CC libraries and color, which is pretty much visible the entire time. If you cannot see your swatches panel, you can come up to window and click it there. So while I'm up here in the top panel, another important panel to be aware of is the CC libraries panel. Now this is a good panel to have available as this can help if you work across multiple Adobe programs. Here you can add things like colors and visual assets, which you can easily access across Adobe apps. Here, for example, I have multiple libraries for various projects I have worked on in the past. I like to keep colors for various projects, which helps me access them easily. I can simply click a particular library to open and start using the elements right away in my document. Typically, as I build a project, I will drop any elements I use a lot and any styles into a library to easily use it again in future and especially across devices. I like to keep my CC libraries panel at the top with my swatches and color palettes, which I can easily access at any time. If you cannot see your CC libraries panel, you can come up to window and click it there. Another important panel to be aware of is the layers panel. If any of you are familiar with Illustrator and Photoshop, you will know this panel and how layers work. But for those of you who may be not familiar, the layers panel is crucial to set the hierarchy of your content in your canvas area. Using this panel can help add new layers and organize your visual elements when creating your layouts. Here I like to keep my layers panel with my pages and links, as this is where I like to focus on managing the content of my document. If you cannot see your layers panel, you can come up to window and click it there. Other key panels to be aware of are the character and paragraph panels. So again, super obvious, but super important. While using InDesign, you are going to be working with text constantly. Earlier, I showed how the control panel and the properties panel can keep you on top of text and formatting, which is great, but you can also have your character and paragraph panel open too. If you want to make a quick change to any type inside a frame, you can simply select it, and in the character or paragraph panel, you can change the type without having to double click inside. Here I like to keep my character and paragraph panel down here in the right corner. If you cannot see your character or paragraph panel, come up to window, scroll down to type and click it there. So while we're on the topic of text and paragraphs, another key panel to be aware of is the character and paragraph styles panel. One of the most powerful features of InDesign is the ability to create styles. This can help you maintain consistency with your type and can be especially helpful when working with large documents. Here you can set a style for your type and easily apply that style to new type and make updates to existing styles. As I create my layout and work with type, I like to use styles. Now each of these is a separate panel and I like to keep them to the left of my main panel. This makes it really easy to pop out on the fly. In these panels, we can create new styles, create folders and organize our styles and also add them to the CC libraries. If you cannot see your styles panel, come up to window, scroll down to styles and click the character and paragraph styles from there. Other important panels to be aware of are the object and table styles panel. So just like character and paragraph styles, we can also apply styles to objects and tables, such as stroke effects, color, and so on. Just like having multiple text in a document, you may also have multiple objects or tables. If you cannot see your object or table styles panel, you can come to window, scroll down to styles and click to open them from there. Just like with the character and paragraph styles, in the object styles panel, we can apply formatting to an object and create a new style and then simply apply the same style to a new object. If we make any changes, it will apply to all objects throughout the document associated to that style. And the same goes for any tables you may have. Again, I like to keep my object and table styles panel to the left of my main panel. This makes it really easy to pop out on the fly. Another important panel is the effects panel. Now, as you create your objects in your layout, there will be times when you may want to apply effects such as adding transparency effects, blending modes, outer glows, and drop shadows, to name a few. This can all be done easily from the effects panel. For example, if I click on a frame in the canvas area, up in the effects panel, I can click to expand the panel, 
and we can see things like opacity of the object, the blending mode applied, and keep an eye on any effects applied to the object. Also, you can click on the FX button at the bottom, and from there, you can see a range of effects you can apply to your object or any effects currently applied. Again, I like to keep my effects panel to the left of my main panel. This makes it really easy to pop out on the fly. If you cannot see your effects panel, you can come up to window and click it from there. Another key panel to be aware of is the stroke panel. Working with strokes is something else you will be doing a lot in InDesign, so it's good to have this panel accessible. This is useful to customize all stroke criteria and apply using start and end points and stroke styles such as dashed lines, stroke weight, and how it may be aligned on an object frame. Again, I like to keep my stroke panel to the left of my main panel. This makes it really easy to pop out on the fly. And one last keyframe to be aware of is the pre-flight panel. Now, while working in InDesign, you will want to keep on top of any issues or mistakes you may have in your document. If you cannot see your pre-flight panel, you can come up to window, scroll down to output and click it there. Now, the pre-flight panel is great to keep an eye on and it can help inform you if you have any issues with missing links, type or missing fonts. Sometimes you can have overset type in a frame where a frame may include more type than the frame is large enough to show. So the pre-flight panel can let you know so you can go straight to it and correct it. Likewise with links. If there are any issues, you can go straight to the link and correct it. Before exporting your document, you want to make sure that there are no issues in this panel. Here, I like to keep my pre-flight panel at the top of my quick menu to the left of my panels for easy access. So those are some of the key panels I would recommend you familiarize yourself with and have easy access to when working in InDesign. These panels will make it very easy for you to start using InDesign to create layouts. So now we're starting to gain some fundamental understanding of InDesign and we're starting to get ourselves ready to get properly hands-on. So let's jump into the next subject.